بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Every soul is going to taste death However, the most important question is what type of death? Is it going to be a good one, pleasant one, that is satisfactory and accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will benefit the person, make a good end to his life in this world? Or on the other hand, God forbid, is it going to be a bad death? Dying at a bad situation, at a bad time when someone is away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there is one narration that explains how to prevent a bad death happening to a person. Is there a way? Yes, the Messenger وسلم, told us that doing good deeds will prevent a bad death. Doing good deeds will prevent a bad death. There is a very surprising story related from the early generations in Islam. A trader, man was a trader, people came rushing to him because a cart that is pulled by a horse trembled his little child and ran him over. So they came to him to tell him to hurry up, at least have the final look on your little guy. They thought that he died. He said, there is no way, he's not going to die this way. So what do you mean? It happened, it's already there. We've just been there. He said, no, in the morning I saw him. He was carrying his breakfast, a loaf of bread. And a lady came with her little boy. They were hungry, poor people. And he cut it into two half and gave each one of them one half. It's impossible he's going to die this way. Because the Messenger says he's going to prevent a bad death. SubhanAllah, shortly after, the guy was running over. Jumping and playing. Nothing is wrong with him. What is surprising is not the incident itself, but the amount of faith and belief that that man had. Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the speech of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, uh, the concept is that doing good deed is something that it will prevent bad things happening to you in this world and in the hereafter. In the hereafter, the Messenger وسلم, told us that each person will be under the shade of his charity. You are not doing enough charity, you will not have enough shade in the hereafter. God forbid. That is your shade. You are building a shade for you. How large do you want it to be? How thick? How much insulation do you need? Whatever it is. It depends on what you are doing. Now, the Messenger وسلم, gave us example in one beautiful hadith of three different good deeds. The story is about the three men who were traveling and then rain forced them to seek shelter in a cave. However, due to the heavy rains, a very large boulder, large stone, fell and closed the opening of the cave. So they were trapped there. They tried to push it one way or the other, so it's impossible extremely heavy and very large. So they lost all hope, except the hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Says none can help us, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody, we're in the middle of nowhere. And it is already a storm, lots of rain. If somebody is going to check, that is going to be after the, the floods are uh, receded, that will take a few days. So it's impossible, we're doomed. So they say, let us, Make tawassul to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our good deeds. Let each one of you search for the best good deed that he has done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And make dua sincerely with that. The first man made the dua with his goodness towards his parents. He was a sheep herder. Had lots of sheep. So he'll go herd them in the morning, come later in the night, and milk some of the sheep and give first of all to his parents. Not even himself, he never tasted. Not any of his children or his wife or his workers and servants. None will taste it except my parents first. That was his routine every day of his life. However, one day, he's mentioning that, 
So I went far away in search of a grazing land. When I came, I came late and my parents were sleeping. So I did the same thing, continuity of good deeds. So I went, I milked some of the sheep and I brought it near them and I stood there waiting for them to wake up. They didn't wake up until Fajr. All the night, I am very hungry, my children are starving and the workers, but I said no one will taste it. And you know how difficult it is for a father to see his children hungry and crying for something in his hand. And if he had given them, there is no blame upon him, nothing is wrong with that at all. If he has taken the share of his parent and distributed everything and fed everybody, absolutely fine. He never did anything wrong. However, he didn't want to change his routine. He says, none is going to taste it before my parents. And I'm willing to wait. And he continued standing. You can imagine a man who has been herding the whole day and then standing the full night till the morning. The only reason is to please his parents. He said they woke up around Fajr time, I gave them and then I gave to my family. So he prays to Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty, if you know that I've done this sincerely for your continence, for your pleasure, then relieve us a little from the burden that we are in. And that polder shifted slightly. They could see now some light and the sky, but it's impossible to move it further or anything. Now the second man, on the other hand, he made dua and tawassul with a different thing, which was his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his modesty and morality. Initially, that was a very bad man. And he used to do lots of sins and wrongdoings. And it so happened that he loved his cousin a lot. He himself mentions in the hadith as the Messenger of Allah related to us that I have loved, him, uh, loved her more than or the maximum any man could ever love a woman. Possible. It took over all his thinking, all his wisdom. So the main goal throughout his life is to be with that woman. However, it was impossible for him to be with her in a halal way, so he was thinking of being with her in a bad way, a wrong way, which he refused repeatedly. However, there was a year of famine. No rain, drought, most of their belongings were lost or died. So she came, and he says in the other narration, extremely very shabby way, extremely bearing the burden of poverty and, and, and tiredness and lack of enough food and so on. She was asking him for a little help for her and her family. He refused until she offered him the wrong desire that he is wishing for. She refused. She went back. Came the next day in a worse situation. She couldn't have anything that day forevermore. Begged him for something which he again refused until she gave him what he wants. She refused again and went. He said, she came to me the third day in the worst possible situation. Asked for some help. So I saw her, no way. I'm ready to give you 120 dinar that I've been collecting for so long. 120 dinar of gold. Each dinar is actually the weight of 4.25 grams of gold. So 120, this is a huge amount at any given time. She agreed. When he was about to do that, she said, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are you going to answer Allah Almighty when he asks you? So he thought, he says, you are thinking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are in this bad situation. And I am not thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while I am well off. Then he made his repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kept her safe as she was and kept all the money for her to make up for his mistake. To take the money and go. Now we have many points here. The first one, never give up on any person no matter how bad he might be. Advise him to good things. Allah Almighty could purify his soul and his heart at an instant. So you need, as this woman, she never gave up till the very last moment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him to repent 
and that saved her and saved him and saved the society from all the bad effects of that second thing is that the importance of not causing people to be in such a dire situation of poverty poverty is one of the crimes of humanity the crimes of humanity humanity is wasting so much over spending and over wasting and over uh, exaggerating so many things go and check in the dumps any place you were in the world some estimates are saying that about 90% of world produce go to waste while on the other hand we have about 900 million dying from poverty lack of enough food before we finish this speech probably close to 1,000 or 2,000 are going to die from hunger all they need to sustain themselves is a few bites but humanity is not doing enough people are wasting on this side and people are dying from hunger on that side there's a problem it is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not providing people on earth enough he's providing them more than they need by many faults but they are not utilizing it in a good way they are not helping each other poverty when a person is in extreme poverty he is going to do anything at one time he's going to cry no matter what it's a survival instinct as why Ali radiallahu he used to say that if poverty was a man I would have fight him until I kill him and the other uh, saying there because he says hunger is like disbelief kufr because eventually he's going to guide a man to disbelieve, God forbid. Some of the extremely poor Muslims in some poor countries, they leave Islam because they are extremely poor. Someone comes to offer them whatever they need in exchange for leaving their belief. They do it, their heart is still with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but what to do? So this here, in this one, it is the duty of the humanity to help those who are in need. Now about the third man, the third man may tawassul with his honesty and trust uh, worthfully. His truthfulness and trustworthiness. He said that I hired some men to do some work for me. After they finished, I gave them their rights. Except for a man among them, he refused to take his share. He belittled it. We have already agreed and we agreed on a farak of rice. Farak is approximately three sa. A sa is about three kg. So it's about nine kg of rice. Work for me, finish this work, you'll get nine kg of rice. He refused to take it and he left. So I kept it as a trust with me. And I seeded it. As if they were going to rot or being eaten by insects and so on, I thought of planting it. So I made a plantation. And it grew and produced a lot. So I took part of it and I sell some part of it and bought some other items and so on and more rice and I started repeating the process. After some time, I had enough money with me to buy some cattle, cows and sheep and then camels and then buy someone to take care of them. Hire a sheep herder. Says this continued for many years. Then a day a man comes to me and I recognized him. He was my worker of late. And he said, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give me my right because I didn't receive it. He says, yes, I remember. You refused to take it. See all these kettles and that ship herder? All of them belong to you. He says, do not belittle me or mock me and make jokes about me. I am asking for my right. I agreed with you on a farak of rice, so give me that. He says, no, by Allah Almighty, I'm not joking. All of that is the produce of that farak. It is all yours. I was just keeping it for you. But it produced. At that time, this man was not well off as before. He said, still, he took all of it entirely and left me absolutely nothing. And went away. And I didn't stop him. All of it has belonged to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieved him from that dangerous situation because of their good deeds. Now this beautiful hadith from the Messenger وسلم, especially the last incidents about amana and trustworthiness 
We remember in the other narration from the Messenger of Allah when another incident, a man bought a land from another. And while he was working on it, he discovered hidden gold. And it was in large quantity. So he took it and went to the man who sold him the land. And he said, take your gold, because I bought from you the land only, not the gold. This belongs to you. So he said, no, it belongs to you. I sold you the land and everything on it or in it. I have sold you whatever I own, and it belongs to you. They were actually arguing that the other person should take the money. And they continued to quarrel until they decided to go to a wise man and ask him, solve the situation. Who deserves this? They are afraid because it's a manna. Trust. Allah Almighty is going to ask you. Nowadays, subhanAllah, there are some people who do not care. Halal, haram, whatever it is, no problem. As long as it's in my hand, fine. They think that this is a type of cleverness. No. Allah Almighty is going to ask each, every one of us about the least thing that he took illegally. No matter how little. In the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he mentioned that anyone who takes something illegally, no matter how little, Allah Almighty is going to hold him accountable in the hereafter. So a man asked him, what about a dried stick of brushing twig? Miswak. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, even if it was like that. You found it, it's not yours. Who said it's yours? No matter how little it might sound or be. So they went to that, that man, the wise man told them, after couldn't find any solution, they said, okay, do you have children? So the first one, he says, yes, I have a son. The second one says, I have a daughter. He says, okay, fine, marry them to each other. And spend on them from this gold, and the rest give it in charity. So they agreed and they did that. So now it belongs to the same, both of them benefited from that, and then the rest was given in charity. Now this beautiful hadith is comprehensive. It speaks about the relationship and interactions within a society. The first one, within your own family and household, with your parents, with your children, with your wife, with your workers and servants. Second one is about your relationship with the society, whether they are relatives or otherwise, whether they are in good time or in need. The third one deals about the financial relations and trading and interactions. Comprehensive picture. In the first one, there is the type of doing goodness to someone else, even though you are not obligated to do that, going the extra mile. Doing what you are not obligated, just to perfect whatever goodness you are doing. In the second one, it is the exact opposite, preventing, harming anybody who, even if he was in extreme need, even if he agrees to be harmed, you are not allowed to harm anybody. So preventing yourself from harming anyone. Preventing yourself from taking advantage of those who are in need. The third one is about the concept of amana and trustworthiness, which is protecting the rights of other people and giving them their right entirely. When someone does not take his right from you, that does not remove the right. The right is never removed by the passage of time. It remains his right. If he comes after 20 years, 50 years, if his children and his grandchildren come asking for that, it belongs to them. A right is never obligated by the passage of time. You need to be extremely careful about this. So this hadith of the Messenger وسلم, is a beautiful practical example. The Messenger وسلم, gave it these examples to be role models for us. How to deal in these different situations. How to be a good person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two things the Messenger وسلم, told us is going to protect you at your times of difficulties. Check around you anyone who is in a difficult situation. For a long period of time you will find that he is not doing one of these things. Anyone. The Messenger وسلم, said in the advice to Ibn Abbas anhuma, protect the right of Allah Almighty and Allah Almighty will protect you. Do not do something that Allah forbade. This is the right of Allah Almighty. Do what Allah Almighty wants and do not do something that Allah Almighty forbade you from doing. See, many cases coming to me, people who are in difficult situations, whether it is financial or within a family household or within social problems and so on, and you find <coughs> He has been dealing in riba for the passage of many years in his life, probably not giving up, continuing. 
or he has not been following, not being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was well off and he was not helping those who are less advantages, those who are in need, and so on. He was not doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from him. If you are not going to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Almighty wants to save you, and thus Allah Almighty will force you to get away from these things. Not doing to do it willingly, Allah Almighty will force you to do it. Because he wants to save you. He does not want to punish you. So that is the hadith of the Messenger Protect Allah Almighty and you will find him there for you. And the other thing that the Messenger mentioned, which is doing the, or giving the rights of people in what you have. Whatever you have, no matter whether it is too much or too little, there is already rights for other people in it. And these rights are not one level. First comes yourself. Second comes your wife. Third comes your children. Fourth comes your parents. Fifth comes the rest of your relatives. Sixth come the rest of people in the society. These are the levels. You have to start fulfilling your duties toward them. Anyone who does that, Allah Almighty will protect him. The Messenger gave, gave us this hint. He said, remember Allah Almighty during good time, during prosperity. And he will remember you during adversity, during bad times. Remember Allah Almighty during prosperous time. He will remember you. In adversity. You don't have to worry. Like you see these three people, they didn't do any good deed when they were in the cave. When they were trapped, when they were between life and death, did they do any good deed? Did they? No. They remember the good deed they used to do when they were well off. When you are well off, that is how you need to show that you are a good person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when you, are in, when you are in need. Everybody turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single person. Even the disbelievers and the atheists, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they are in a critical situation. It's human nature. That does not change the realities. So the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa remember Allah Almighty. In prosperity, He will remember you in adversity. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to His divine truth, make us good for ourselves and everyone around us. Ameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.